Now getting back to my main point, I believe 1 Corinthians 14.26 clearly implies uh, that the format of the church meeting in Corinth was open in its nature. That is, the meeting was such so that any member of the church in Corinth could freely contribute uh, to the meeting. However, I realize that some argue that Paul is not so much endorsing open meetings, but that he is simply allowing open meetings. Well, I would tend to differ with this idea. First of all, if 1 Corinthians 14.26 implies an open meeting, and they had open meetings in Corinth, one must ask how the Corinthian believers came to have open meetings in the first place. I mean, where did they get this idea from? Could it be that such an open format to their meetings was established by the Apostle Paul when he originally founded and organized the church? I think this is likely the case. For if Paul established any other format, it's hard to imagine that Paul would have tolerated the Corinthian church in, in deviating from such a format. I mean, let's assume that when Paul founded the Corinthian church, he instructed them to have meetings where only the most theologically sound and, and mature and talented of teachers and speakers could address the body. Now, are we going to conclude that even though the Corinthians deviated from this apostolic pattern with their open meetings, that Paul didn't seem to care to address this deviation anywhere in his letters to them? I don't think that's a very reasonable conclusion at all in, in light of the fact that Paul doesn't seem to shy away from uh, addressing even the relatively smallest of problems in the church of Corinth. Put it plainly, if, if the Corinthians had departed from the apostolic format, I strongly believe Paul would have addressed it. And so in light of this, I believe it's pretty clear uh, that the open format Paul alludes to in 1 Corinthians 14.26 was none other than the very same format he himself divinely uh, estab established for the Corinthians when he originally founded the church. In other words, it wasn't so much his idea, it was God's idea that he established this format. In addition, some might argue that 1 Corinthians 14 is not relevant because it mentions the gifts of tongues and prophecy, which are supposedly not valid anymore. But whether tongues and prophecy are valid anymore is not really relevant to the general principle that Paul alludes to in 1 Corinthians 14. But one of the points of, of this chapter, again, is, is that a church meeting is to be of such a nature so that each member is free uh, to contribute to how they are gifted by God or moved um, by the Holy Spirit. I just want to emphasize that this conclusion that I'm drawing is not based solely on 1 Corinthians 14, but it's based on all, many other passages in the New Testament in regard to the responsibilities that Christians have uh, during a church meeting. I encourage you to look up these passages. I'm going to cite quite a few of them uh, which support the idea of an open meeting. Uh, Ephesians 4.16, Ephesians 5.19, Colossians 3.16, 1 Peter 4.10. Romans 12.6, Romans 15.14, 1 Timothy 3.15, Jude 1.20, uh, Hebrews 5.12, Hebrews 10.25, and 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, and so forth. All these passages either specifically command or imply that there is to be mutual interaction, exhortation, and encouragement during church meetings. In particular, consider 1 Corinthians 12 where Paul declares the fact that every member of the church is valuable and is gifted by the Spirit of God for the building up, for the purposes of, of building up and ministering to the assembly. Now, if members possess gifts to build up the assembly, uh, when would be one of the best times for such gifted members to use their gifts? namely the verbal gifts of, of encouragement and teaching and exhortation and so forth. It wouldn't be the best time for them to use those gifts. During the time the assembly meets, right? I mean, this is precisely what we find in 1 Corinthians 14, where Paul describes the kind of meeting uh, the Corinthians were having. You know, far from being based on the Corinthians' you know, creativity and ingenuity, the open meetings the Corinthians had were ultimately based on the divinely inspired pattern Paul established for the Corinthians when he founded the church there in Corinth. These open meetings were not a cultural norm. 
they were not something unique to the Corinthian church. Uh, these meetings were simply the logical outworking of the principles that Paul declares in 1 Corinthians 12 and other passages which teach that each Christian is a, is a priest before God and he is uniquely gifted by God for the building up of the body of Christ. And thus every Christian should have the opportunity to use uh, the gifts that he has and the abilities that he has when the, when the body of Christ assembles. And generally only in a meeting that is of an open nature an open format can provide such an opportunity. And as other texts indicate, the open meeting established for the Corinthians uh, was not just binding on them, but it was binding upon all the other churches as well. And it's still binding on the church today. So I leave you with these questions. Does your church practice open meetings where every member is free to exercise their gifts and abilities for the building up of the gathered body of Christ. And if not, why not? Thank you and God bless.